Hey everyone, so I finished the Odyssey by Homer and now I'm going to give you my review of what I thought, what I liked, what I didn't like, and a few talking points in case you want to read it or in case you're reading it right now. So this is the book that I used by Barnes & Noble. It's the nice leather bound edition. It's got the Iliad and Odyssey in it. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into it. The things that I liked. I enjoyed the story. I really did. I really liked the story. Uh, I can understand why colleges decide to uh, teach this book in high or in college, not high school. And um, it's just, it's a great story overall. It was written thousands of years ago. And it's a nice little snapshot into like history, kind of what the people thought, what they did, their actions, uh, their portrayals. Uh, that Which brings me to my second point. I really like the character portrayals in this book. So it's not the stereotypical good guy, bad guy um, kind of book. You do have your main leader, which is not clear, clearly defined in the beginning of the book. It is Odysseus. Um, but even he has flaws, which I like. So uh, he actually acknowledges the fact that he gets angry all the time and that he's very quick to action. But he works through those to make sure that he can actually make it onto his next point in the journey. Uh, the bad guys, the suitors, who are in his household, even though they are pretty despicable people and do quite a bit of bad things throughout the book, they do have some good, decent human elements to them. They still are a little bit respectable, even though they're complete assholes. Um, the third thing, I really liked the adventure of the story. I really liked the fact that it was this big epic, obviously because it's a Greek epic, um, I love all the monsters and the myths and the gods. I love the fact that the gods intervene with the mortals' lives. I also really love to see which gods are on which mortals' side and learn the reason why. So in this one, the main god who hates Odysseus is Poseidon, and it's really interesting to see why. It's not just because Poseidon woke up one day and was like, I'm a hate Odysseus. No, he actually has a point to it. Um, the fourth thing is I love the depiction of men in this book. So you would think a book that was written about 4,000 years ago would have this toxic masculinity aspect to it, and it completely doesn't. What's great is every single one of these characters, whether male or female, but especially men, they cry, they laugh, they're excited, they're scared. And there's many times in the book where they openly cry and weep at things, and it even says by Homer that they weep, like full on, Tears, notebook, tears. Like, when you watch the notebook and you start crying, those kind of tears. Um, and it's great because the men aren't thought of as less than men for their emotions. They're actually very um, honored by them. It shows how great the men are. So I really, really like that aspect. Um, I think the last point is that I love the intensity factor because a lot of people die. I mean, a lot of people. Which is great. Um... Not great that they died, but it's it's great that the story is elevated and there are a lot of lives at stake, there's a lot of property at stake, destruction, death, and uh, they pretty much die in very gruesome ways, whether getting eaten by Cyclopses, Scylla, um, destroyed by the giants, you name it, Homer describes it in pretty gory detail, but I like that, it's not sugar-coated. So... This brings me to my second section of the review, the things that I really didn't like. Um, and they're not very many points, but it's more of a technicality that I didn't like. So the first point, I didn't like the structure. I hated the structure of the book. Now, this is also because I've had this preconceived notion that the Odyssey was all about Odysseus, that you would start from the beginning with Odysseus, go through his travels, see everything, and that's not what happens, guys. Literally the first like five or six chapters of the book is all about Telemachus and all about um, his journey. So you have to really slog through the first six chapters of the book. But I mean, you get the the history and the in media ray, and it's it's a little boring. I'm not gonna not gonna lie to you guys. But once you get to Odysseus, you still don't get to the good part. You get to the part where he's on Calypso's island. Yada, yada, yada. It's not until a few chapters after you meet Odysseus that he then tells his story. And guys, once it gets to that point, it's awesome. I mean, it is really good. The story picks up and it flows and he's battling monsters and he's seeing giants and he's getting ships turned into stone. Like, it's really cool. 
it really is that epic that I wanted it to be. It just takes quite a while to get to that point. Um, my second thing that I didn't like about the book is the overuse of details. My god, there are so many details in this book. Um, I know in that time period, doing a little bit of research on this book, um, it was considered respectable to tell like a character's lineage, who their father was, and a brief description. Like that, it, that was considered nice and considered honorable. When you start talking about cows that you're about to sacrifice and who the cow's mama was and who the cow's daddy was, that's when it gets to be too much. I mean, there's literally an entire paragraph about a freaking cow they're about to eat. And it talks about the whole cow's lineage. And you're like, wait a second, is this a person or is this a cow? And then you remember it's a cow and they slit its throat. So, way too many details. Um, also, there's several points in the book where... Um, Homer is describing things so like the big nice gate of Alcinius when he gets to the king and guys in the podcast I know I probably spent a good like minute and a half talking about these stupid doors of King Alcinius's but it takes three pages to describe the door not even lying and it couldn't just simply be that the door had gold on it, it he goes to all these similes about how the gold was as bright as Hephaestus' burning fire, whatever, whatever. And it's literally redonkulous, guys. Which, I can see why people don't read it, because even I, when listening to it, after like two or three minutes of hearing all about these doors, my mind was like, wait, are we still talking about the doors? Or are we still talking about uh, Odysseus? It's the doors. Uh, and so that's kind of the third thing. The fourth thing. He repeats himself quite often. Now, I do this myself. I repeat myself in the conversation, ask Zach, he'll agree. This man repeats himself so much, it's almost like a student who has a 5,000-word essay due, has 3,000 words, and just basically says the same thing over again in different terminology. Um, for example, I'll give you a great example chapters i think it's like 12 through 18 or whatever is all about odysseus and his travel and the epicness and it's great and it's beautiful in chapter 23 when odysseus and penelope get it on with themselves and um after that they decide to talk to each other about what's happened over the 20 years because they haven't seen each other in that long <sighs> this man takes 10 pages to re-describe everything that you've already read. And it's like, hun, we know. We were there. We read this. But Homer feels the need to reiterate it all again. He couldn't have just simply said it in two sentences. No. He basically has to say it in seven pages. Um, but, I mean, it's other than those kind of factors, I know I kind of harped on the negative a little bit, but it, all in all, it's a really great book. Um... If you're interested in reading it, I would say audiobook it. Uh, some of the names are really hard to pronounce. It's also you look at the you look at the name and you go, oh, I think I know how to pronounce that, and then you look it up and you're like, nope, I was wrong. I've done that many times, but I think audiobook is the best way if you want to read it. Um, if you don't want to read it, if you're reading it for class or an assignment, by all means, go watch my videos, guys. They're so much easier. They're so much shorter. And there's enough detail in them that you're going to get the story that you need to know for your tests and quizzes without actually having to read it. Um, each one of the chapters with audiobook is about 30, 40 minutes. My videos are anywhere from 3 minutes to 10 minutes. So, and again, most of that is just because he repeats himself or they talk about doors for 4 pages. Anyways, sorry. I digress. Uh, all in all, I like the book. Will I read it again? Probably not. Um, what I wish they would do is make a mini series, like on Netflix or a Hulu or HBO, because they could do a really good job out of it. Uh, they could probably they probably could condense a lot of these chapters into one episode. Um, they probably could get away with three or four chapters per episode and be totally fine. And uh, it's it's a it's a good story. It's a one and done for me. I've read it. I've got it. There's no need to do it again.
But anyways, I'm going to cut myself off before I just ramble on. Uh, and all in all, great book, great story. Read it once. If you don't want to read it once, watch my videos, guys. It'll be so much shorter and easier. But uh, I really liked it. Credit to Homer. Uh, credit to John Lesko for the audiobook. Uh, he is on iTunes. He does a great job with the audiobook. A little dry in some places, but he does really well. Uh, anyways, so have a great one, you guys. Tell me what you think about the Odyssey, if you've read it, if you haven't read it, if you've seen my videos or not. And uh, comment down below and tell me what your favorite part of the Odyssey is or what other books you think I should do next. And guys, remember to please like, share, and subscribe so that way you never miss out on great content of ours. All right, have a great one.